I would like to bring our speakers on the panel for a few questions. So may I request uh, Bupender, Bert, and BC back on the panel again? See, we saw three different technologies, but there was one common message coming in is that how geospatial technology is making geospatial information a kind of commodity. Right from preservation of uh, cultural and heritage buildings to building smart infrastructure, as well as roads and highways, all can be done through a combination of technologies. So the point here is that how do we converse? How do we converse these three different technologies and make a solution out of this? How do you make the workflow work? Because for each one of them, what you need is data acquisition, you need data modeling, you need data analysis, and then you need an industry uh, you know, kind of oriented solution. So uh, would you like to show some, some light on this, Bhupendra, that how does three technologies converge together? The convergence of the technology from our standpoint is, first of all, uh, part of our job as a technology provider is to make it automatic for you, the user, right? So if you have to do all the work, then that's one of the problems of each of you gets raw data and the hard, heavy lifting of being able to massage and manipulate it becomes your problem. So what we've found, at least from, from our standpoint, that as uh, these various pieces of information are, are getting created from the technologies that you've talked about, the information is being embedded in them that allows us as a software provider, the hardware providers on the stage, and I'll, tell, I'll give you the software perspective and you can tell us the hardware perspective. So what's interesting is when we get in information from an image or from a satellite image or from a photograph, quite often it has the geocoding already in it, right? So we can extract that. The com combination of that along with, as uh, you mentioned, the cheap computing of uh, cloud computing. So from our standpoint, you take all of the hardware with all of this intrinsic information, you combine it with the ability to store, process stuff in the cloud, then you can stream that information back to a user. So uh, an exact use case that might, might tell you is I am able to take into a model the accurate position. So it's something we use the word intelligent positioning, right? So all of the magic has to happen when you can take the physical world and you can recreate the digital world and you've got to be able to accurately position yourself. That accurate position then allows you to be able to search, examine, and consume the appropriate level of detail. So our job then is to index all of this stuff and be able to map your position from the physical world to the digital world. And the rest of it is then all just leveraging the hardware and software capabilities. So searching, examining, consuming is what you need to do, right? And Google has made that obviously ubiquitous. You just key in something and you search. So imagine the same way. You're an infrastructure professional. You say, OK, I'm building a bridge in this location. Here's where I am. Here's what I need. And you should be able to do a Google-like search what needs to happen for it? All of the existing infrastructure needs to be indexed, tagged spatially, and then made available in the context for the application. Right? So that's all the convergence that we would do as a software provider. So maybe I'll give it to you for a hardware point of view. Okay. Yeah, I think from the uh, hardware perspective, I think, uh, again, with reference to the topic that we have today, um, I think the key thing here is that uh, before we even talk about data, we talk about data acquisition. Right. So to make data acquisition actually as easy as possible, um, as affordable as possible, I think that's a key thing before you even start talking about anything else. So, so I think from the hardware perspective, what we are trying to do, or try to, what Ferro is trying to achieve is really to develop new products, you know, looking at how, um, or really what the customer wants, how to make that product and that technology easy to use, how to make the data acquisition easy to use, right? And then try to make the data in the platform that is now, um, can be used in different softwares that put 
that different software can just use that, combine that together into a solutions or a results that's been needed um, you know, by, by, by our customers. I mean, that's the key thing, making that um, affordable, as I said before, making that um, available, and then make it so easy to use that you require minimal training and uh, minimal supervision and someone can get the job done easily. Yeah, I think there's no question that in order to solve the most complex problems that governments and companies bring to us, uh, it requires multiple sources of information and data, multiple sources of insight or analytics, maybe multiple sources of platforms or software to integrate and visualize what that answer might be. But without a question, the last year, the most exciting uh, and the biggest breakthroughs that we've had as a company with our customers are those uh, solutions that are that we bring multiple sources of, of content, information, data, different types of platforms together to create an answer, ultimately an answer. So I think the integration is, is really important and also uh, the different sources of, uh, of ways to solve a, a complex problem. Thanks. Thanks, Bert. Uh, you know, we saw a lot of photo, a lot of imageries which comes into us, and uh, Bentley provides software to uh, uh, integrate them all together. You talked about physical world to the virtual reality. Where do you see the integration uh, between sensors and satellite sensors uh, coming in the coming days, uh, Bert? Yeah, in terms of the visualization? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'll leave it up to the, the software experts to, to provide the platform for our, our customers to, to visualize it. Uh, but in terms of um, being able to rapidly create 3D models or uh, digital elevation models literally within um, hours versus what used to be days in terms of from capture to visualization, um, there, there's one big customer in the world that's doing that today with our help, uh, and they're the most, com uh, the most um, comprehensive in terms of, of, of finding new ways and using technology to do visualization in a very uh, quick manner. And I think we just need to replicate that across uh, the commercial and other, other, uh, other governments around the world. Uh, but it is about time and it is about technology and, and algorithms and, and software to rapidly visualize, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the language of a customer or in, in the language of a workflow. Thanks, Bert. Uh, a question for BC is that uh, you talked about mobility, accuracy, easy to use and price, all these factors which are making it commoditized. Do you imagine a Faro scanning capability in my cell phone? Um, well, I can't speak of that, of course, but to me, I think um, it's definitely a possibility, right? As you know, as you might, what you mentioned earlier, right? Now today we have GPS already on most of phones, right? So what to stop us from bringing the scanning technology all the way down to your phone level, right? You are already taking photographs with your phone. You are taking videos with your phone, right? So what, what's going to stop us from doing that? Of course, there's challenges in the technology, in the cost of bringing that down, and of course, uh, developing the right software to make sure that can accept that uh, the data, and then uh, you know present the right way um, they can use it. But yeah, I don't think there's any reason why we can stop that from happening. Thanks. Uh, we bring the last question to you. Uh, Bert talked about multiple sources of sensors and multiple sources of data coming in regularly. And since morning, we've been talking about you know, constellation of satellites going in, number of constellations going in, small satellites, uh, high resolution satellites, and of course, spy satellites as well. And uh, with the capabilities of sensors coming into our cell phones, how do you think that uh, the platform which has to integrate all of them in the off-site and on-site project delivery would be able to uh, respond to, or rather optimize uh, this kind of uh, you know, capability to make it real-time uh, in a project delivery system? So the, the convergence of uh, the physical and the digital world, I'll go back to that statement, where the richer, 
I mean, we're, li we're sitting in a convention center and there probably isn't a 3D model of this convention center. And if there was a 3D model today, it would be what I would call a dead model, right? It wouldn't talk to you. It wouldn't tell you about itself. So you can imagine that maybe five, 10, 15 years from now, we would have infrastructure that would talk to us. A bridge would tell us exactly what the strain was when a truck went over it. It would tell us the difference between its design state versus its current operating state. So you can imagine that the convergence of each of these sensors being put into these pieces of infrastructure eventually then make the distinguishing between the physical and digital almost uh, impossible for you to know. And that, that environment then becomes so much more effective for us to, to operate in. So we use the word intelligent infrastructure to describe this universe. Today, the, uh, a, a piece of infrastructure that can react in advance to catastrophic failure, that you can get notified before there's going to be a catastrophic collapse. That, from a safety standpoint, imagine the kind of things that you could accomplish with being able to take and leveraging this kind of sensors and making real-time decisions during the operations of it, and certainly helping you design and construct it more effectively. And a lot of these things are actually being done today, but they're being done in silo. So the convergence, the, the leveraging of a platform that can take the hardware and software together would basically enable all of these siloed, break, the breakthrough of workflow so that you can start with the design and end with the operating uh, construct of an intelligent piece of infrastructure without having to recreate information. So the information mobility combined with all of the sensor and real-time information can end up as something that certainly I look forward to working in this industry for the next 10 years. Oh, thank you very much. It's been uh, exciting to talk to them, and uh, let's give them a big applause for all the speakers.